accurate measurement and control of process temperature is one of the most important functions of instrumentation. Furnace outlet temperatures. Reactor temperatures. Fractionator tower temperatures. Catalyst regenerator temperatures. Storage tank temperatures, and many more, are critical to product quality, and even more important, to safe operations. The most widely used and more important types of temperature measurement devices can be classified into two major categories, non-electrical methods and electrical methods. In this module, we will learn about the non-electrical methods of detecting a temperature change. The four methods we will study are one, a change in volume of a liquid, two, a change in pressure of a gas, three, a change in vapor pressure, and four, a change in dimensions of a solid. The first three methods are classified as filled thermal systems and are used extensively for indicating, recording, and controlling temperatures. The fourth method, which uses the thermal expansion of metals principle, is used mostly in indicators and thermostats. We will begin our lesson with the filled thermal systems. The temperature sensing element is a hollow bulb which contains the actuating medium, either liquid, gas, or a combination of liquid and vapor. The flexible capillary tube connects the bulb to the receiving element. A hollow, pressure-responsive spring detects the temperature change at the bulb due to the thermal expansion of the filling medium. The pressure-responsive spring is identical to the Borden tube used in pressure instruments. The spring actuates the indicator and also the transmitter mechanism if it is a transmitter. Here is a schematic of a mercury-filled thermal system. The system is completely filled with mercury at the filling tube. It is then pressurized and sealed. An increase in temperature at the bulb expands the mercury, increasing the volume and the pressure on the Borden coil by way of the capillary. The increased volume causes the Borden tube to unwind. The indicator, connected by the linkage, moves an amount proportional to the temperature increase at the bulb. Notice the bimetal section of the linkage. This is to compensate for ambient temperature changes in the case, which would affect the Borden tube and cause an error in the readout. Fill system thermometers, except the vapor pressure type, require some form of ambient temperature compensation. The most common form of case compensation is the bimetallic strip, like the one shown here. It counteracts the movement of the tip of the pressure sensing device. The case compensation does not compensate for ambient changes, which affect the capillary tubing. One way to compensate for the capillary tubing temperature changes in a mercury-filled system is shown here. An Invar wire is inserted in the capillary tubing. This reduces the mercury capacity of the tubing the correct amount, so that for a given change in the ambient temperature, the expansion of the mercury exactly equals the expansion of the tubing. 
When both case and capillary compensation are required, this method may be used. With the exception of the bulb, both systems are identical and work in opposition to each other, canceling out ambient temperature change effects. The manufacturers of American instruments use these classifications for filled system thermometers. This frame shows the average temperature ranges in each classification. Now work exercise one in your workbook. First study the liquid filled systems. Liquid systems operate on the principle of volume expansion of the filling liquid with an increase in temperature. The loading pressure induced in the filled system is incidental. Xylene or other organic liquid may be used as the filler. The organic liquids have a lower freezing point than mercury and are used for low temperature applications. The temperature limits for the organic liquid system are minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The liquid filled systems use the smallest bulbs of any of the filled systems. This may be the determining factor in some installations. Since liquid expansion is linear within the range covered, the chart or scale of a liquid fill system is uniformly graduated. They may also be designed to have the narrowest range of any of the filled systems. Because the system is completely filled with liquid, any expansion must take place in the measuring element since this is the only part of the system with spring characteristics. Force is transmitted equally throughout the liquid. Therefore, a slight change in volume at the bulb is sensed almost instantly at the measuring element. The response is almost instantaneous, but it is necessary for the entire mass of the liquid in the bulb to change to the new temperature before the final reading is correct. An increase in temperature of the capillary or measuring element will cause the readout to change, although not as much as an increase at the bulb because of their lesser volume. Therefore, temperature compensation is required. Usually, if the capillary tubing is 20 feet long or less, only case compensation is required. This is usually done by using a bimetallic strip in the linkage between the measuring element and the pen driving lever. Some manufacturers use a bimetallic helical element designed to work in opposition to the measuring element for any change in case temperature. If the capillary tubing is longer than 20 feet and or if there is a large temperature difference between the tubing and the case, a fully compensated system is required. This includes the case and the capillary tubing. 
the case compensated and fully compensated liquid-filled systems are immune to barometric pressure changes. Static pressures caused by differences in bulb and case elevations do not affect the liquid-filled systems. The reason they are unaffected is because of their high initial filling pressures. Liquid-filled systems are normally used for applications where vapor pressure systems cannot be used, such as measuring or crossing ambient temperatures, measuring widely varying temperatures, measurements where linear charts are preferred. The choice between case-compensated and fully-compensated systems is determined by these two factors. One, a tubing length more or less than 20 feet. Two, ambient temperatures the same or different at the case and along the tubing. Since liquid-filled systems measure average temperature, a length of tubing may be substituted for the bulb for fast response in air or gases. In some installations, such as large air ducts, this average reading is more desirable than a point reading. It is also more accurate. The disadvantages of the liquid-filled type are its delicate construction and its high cost. Here is a summary of the characteristics of the liquid-filled system. We will now look at the mercury-filled systems. They are in a separate class, but work on the same principle as liquid hydrocarbon-filled systems. The vast majority of liquid-filled systems use mercury. The mercury-filled system is not used in temperatures below minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit, or in systems where mercury poisoning would be a hazard, the food industry, for example. The temperature limits are minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. The span of the mercury system is dependent upon the size of the bulb. It can be as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The high filling pressure gives the mercury system a positive positioning action and good response speed. This high internal pressure also makes the system immune to changes in static head pressure caused by moving the bulb above or below the case. The case in capillary temperature compensation is accomplished the same way as in the liquid hydrocarbon systems. There is an exception. One manufacturer uses an invar rod inside the capillary tubing to compensate for ambient temperature changes. The mercury-filled system is the most rugged of all the pressure-actuated types. However, should the system rupture, the spilled mercury is very poisonous and toxic. Be sure to take all necessary safety precautions. Now, work exercise two in your workbook.